hear sleigh bells. Run. I can't think of anything else to say other than run. But I guess for that to make sense, I'd have to go into detail about what happened ten years ago, when I was about eight years old. I've always loved Christmas, ever since I was able to understand the word. Christmas, even the name sounds festive. I'd grown up with every story and song about good old Saint Nick and the warmest holiday imaginable. And in short, one day I decided that I would see him for myself, as most kids with the same upbringing after consider. I prepared for at least a week, navigating around potential landmines like parents being awake, being caught by the jolly fat man himself, or even just leaving evidence that I was ever there. I decided that I'd venture downstairs at 3 a.m. armed with a blanket and some black coffee to keep me awake, although I couldn't stand the bitter taste and often found myself wanting to regurgitate every time I took a sip. When the day finally came, oddly enough, I found myself hearing Santa Claus is coming to town, playing everywhere for just about as long as I could stand. I heard the lines, he sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, over and over again, but I guess something just didn't click, and I really wish it had, I really, really wish it had, because that night I saw something I desperately wish I could unsee, even now, hearing the sound of a sleigh bell, I reflexively recoil. As if I expect something deadly to appear consecutively. The air that night was stiff and chilly. It was coming down violently outside my window, and every step I took down the stairs revived my pulse with a renewed sense of dread. Both the dread of being caught and the dread that you feel descending any flight of creaking stairs. The dread you feel when it startles you. The sudden yet drawn out sound that for a split second you might mistake for a human cry, and yet I continued down the stairs until I reached the place I would be hiding, a small nook between the wall in the living room, the sofa, and the radiator from which I had anticipated being able to discreetly witness Santa's arrival. So I waited there, and I waited, and I waited some more. I must have been through at least my second shot of black coffee, certain that I had been there for two hours, at the very least, when I glanced at the time, and to my horror, not one minute had passed, not one, it was still 3 a.m., I thought certainly that the clock must have been wrong, certainly, it must have stopped indeed, yes, surely that clock was broken. I had literally been counting the seconds upon seconds upon minutes, waiting for anything, anything to happen. I had almost convinced myself that time had passed and that clock was stuck for whatever reason. I had almost been successful in calming myself down when, when I noticed the wind had stopped. The wailing sound of the wind, which resembled a human scream, the occasional knock of an angry gust on any of the closed windows had completely halted. It was silent, completely silent. So silent, in fact, that all I could hear was the sound of my shaking breath. A silence so loud that it accentuated the darkness. Every shadow, every dark corner seemed to reach for me at once, as if trying to swallow me up too and all I could hear was my own increasingly labored breathing. I stayed like that, until I heard it. Something which shattered the silence, once more breaking the comfort I had settled into, cutting through me like the jagged end of a cold knife. It was a jingle, a soft rhythmic chime set to the slightly crooked gate that sounded more like someone dragging themselves around by their elbows rather than walking. 
first thought when I heard the unmistakable chime of the sleigh bells was that Santa was finally here. But as the sound grew closer, I noticed it was accompanied by a soft whimpering sound, which sounded human enough to be recognizable, but inhuman enough for me to be unable to tell how old the voice was, or how feminine or masculine it was. My pulse quickened anew. This wasn't Santa. With each dragging step, the sleigh bells only grew louder, and the whimpering became clearer. Easy, when are even. It sounded even less human than the whimpering had. The speech was broken up and distorted. That thing spoke as if it was literally choking on its own lung. Step chime. The darkness was swallowing me up once more, eating away at my sanity. I found it difficult to breathe. It was getting closer, and the crooked melody of the sleigh bells only grew louder. I held my breath between every pause for every step, every agonizing second before I heard the next chime. Enos. silence, 
was the last thing I heard. I awoke on the cold floor with half a pitcher of coffee clutched tightly in one hand and the blanket wrapped around me. I exhaled quietly, relieved that it had all been a dream, and proceeded with my day as normal. I had almost convinced myself it had never happened. That is, until my mother asked me where that bruise around my neck came from. And outside, I heard a single sleigh bell ring in the darkness of the early winter morning.